Hello, I'm Giles Dixon, the CEO of Wind Europe, and I'm honoured to be sitting on this electric bus in Brussels with Mohamed Mezgani, who is the Secretary General of UITP, the Global Association of Public Transport Operators. So Mohamed, there are more and more of these electric buses nowadays in Europe and elsewhere. What's the goal of the world's public transport operators. How many more electric buses and by when? So electrification of the bus fleet is a priority for uh, public transport. Uh, and a number of uh, public transport operators, actually most of them, are engaged to introduce more electric buses in their fleets. So their objective uh, in uh, STIB is to reduce the uh, carbon footprint by 40% uh, or the greenhouse gas emissions and uh, by 2030. First, they have their own production site, mm -hmm. producing uh, renewable energy via 5,500 solar panels. They uh, have a contract to uh, provide wind energy for their uh, fleets. So Brussels making great progress on the electrification of its buses. What about other cities in Europe? Most of the cities and countries in Europe are introducing uh, either battery electric or hydrogen buses, like the city of Amsterdam, for example, yeah. which has uh, one of the uh, largest electric bus fleets in Europe. Do you see any barriers in, in sourcing renewable energy to power these buses? For, certainly there are some barriers or some obstacles, but I would like to start saying but there is no reluctance from the public transport to introduce renewable energies. Mm -hmm. So they are ready. There are some, uh, some barriers, as you mentioned. First is the availability and, and the supply of renewable energy. In some situations, we don't, there is no enough wind energy. Mm -hmm. And also we need to uh, increase the awareness maybe of the public transport sector on the cost and benefits yeah. of this uh, renewable energies. It's not just replacing one bus by the other. Mm -hmm. It's about redesigning the depot. Mm -hmm. is about introducing recharging stations. Mm -hmm. We need to, to make sure that we are ready. We need to um, enter into a collaboration with the new types of, uh, of uh, partners, of stakeholders, like the power supply company, for example. Yeah. And uh, when I see now the, 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 the rapid development of electrification, of the introduction of renewable energies in public transport, I'm very optimistic. Very good. Look, you can count on the full support of Wind Europe and all our members to explain to the public transport operators that wind has huge advantages. It is cheap, cheaper than other forms of energy, certainly cheaper than fossil fuels. It is increasingly reliable as a source of electricity. Yeah. And if you combine it with storage, you know, it offers extremely reliable forms of power supply to run these buses. And many of them are already getting their electricity from wind farms. And Steve, the, the Brussels operator, signed a new power purchase agreement with a Belgian wind farm just a few days ago. So they will be getting power directly from the wind farm now, which is great. Excellent. And I, I know that also in the Netherlands, the Dutch railways, yes. they are also one of the uh, biggest consumer of wind energy in the, in the Netherlands. And this is really a very uh, a positive trend. And in Germany, the Deutsche Bahn has a power purchase agreement uh, also with onshore wind and offshore wind farms. And in Paris, the RATP, the Parisian uh, public transport operator, uh, has signed power purchase agreements, PPAs with onshore wind farms as well. So this is really uh, beginning to blossom. You mentioned the uh, PPA yeah, just yeah, a few seconds yeah. ago. Can you tell more about that? Yeah, so what it is, is that a wind farm will sign an agreement with uh, an off-taker of electricity, a consumer of electricity. It may be a factory, a large industrial installation, or, as we've been discussing, a public transport operator that has a demand, a big demand for electricity. And it's a long-term agreement, and the wind farm will commit to provide electricity, in your case, to the bus operator mm -hmm. at a fixed price that is fixed for a number of years. And these PPAs can be up to 15 years duration. Now, the advantage for the bus operator is they sign the agreement, and they know what their energy costs are going to be for the next 15 years. They've locked in their energy costs. But we have barriers on our side, uh, as you've hinted. The main barrier yes. there is the permitting 
rules and procedures. They're very um. slow and complex. And this gives us a lot of bottlenecks in actually getting projects moving. But governments are working on this. They know there's a problem and they're all addressing this. And there are new EU rules coming in on this. Now, there's one important point on these PPAs, Mohammed, which is, you know, we've talked about the large national or the very large municipal transport operators which are signing PPAs with mm. wind farms and it's easier for them. Yeah, they are big. But of course, you've got many smaller members, smaller municipalities who might not know about PPAs. And if, even if they do, are looking at this thinking, well, you know, how do we make this work for us? We have a model for aggregating a group of off takers on the demand side who want to club together mm -hmm. and buy electricity together from a single wind farm. Thank you for uh, proposing this, uh, Giles, because yeah. the sector needs that. Yes, you know? yeah. And, uh, and the fact that you can put together small operators in a way to create economy of scale yeah, is excellent. Yeah. So then this is where they charge the buses, Mohammed, in the depot. How long does it take on average? Oh, there are different approaches for yeah. uh, charging. Uh -huh. uh, you have this kind of charging that yeah. we see here in the depot is a charging that takes time. It okay. takes six hours right. or, or more. Yeah. And generally it takes place overnight. But there are also the more rapid charging, fast charging, and especially at terminal stations. It means that the bus, when it arrives at the end of the, uh, of the, of the line, yes. and it will stay there for a few minutes, then they can be recharged. Of course, it's not uh, charging with the full capacity, yes, but yeah. at least it will uh, uh, allow the bus to have more uh, uh, operation. And uh, yeah. what is also good with the charging is that now we can think about uh, making them available for other users, uh -huh. like car drivers, for example, okay. or taxi, uh, taxi drivers. Yeah. It not only serves the buses yeah. or the bus fleet, but also other fleets. What do the general public think of electric buses? When they get on, do they like the experience? Look, when you are on an electric bus, yeah. there is less vibration. Okay. There yeah. is silent, yeah. of course. So yeah. you feel more comfortable okay. in an electric bus. Yes. Yeah. Look, it's great to know that your passengers like the electric experience on the buses. We in the wind industry want to help you give your passengers, your customers, the best experience possible. So let's work together and see how much more wind energy we can give you and all the bus operators and the public transport operators in Europe, Mohammed. Thanks, Giles, for making this proposal. I'm very optimistic. I'm sure this will, will happen. So let's work together. And let's make it happen. Very good, Mohammed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.